my friends. Try Try here with question number two for my trail friends, which is what obstacles did you have to overcome in order to make it to the trailhead on day one? Not obstacles during your hike, but just to get there to begin with, just to even have the chance to attempt a through hike of the Appalachian Trail. So let's see what my friends have to say about that. Hello. So when it comes to obstacles to get out onto the trail, like many people, I had to save up money and quit my job. I quit on good enough terms to come back afterwards, but just trying to predict how long the trail would take. But the biggest challenge of all was bracing myself and my fiance for being apart for longer than either of us have actually been apart for. And we also had a new puppy, which I had no idea how to tackle that. It was just telling my puppy, who has no idea what's about to happen, um, that not to worry, I'll be back. But it was just, I guess, missing my family and missing being home. So I think my biggest obstacle to getting to the trailhead was, quite frankly, me. Um, you know, there were dozens, if not hundreds, of good reasons why it wasn't the right time or why I shouldn't hike the trail at all. But ultimately, I had to make the decision if I wanted to do it and then make it happen from there. You know, we talk a lot about how it's really in the mind to get you to Katahdin once you're on the trail. But I think the mind games are even more intense and it's a more difficult mind challenge getting to the trail. So that was my biggest obstacle and I think it's a lot of people's. Hey y'all, it is Disciple from Not By Sight. The question is obstacles, uh, getting to the trail. Man, the trail, uh, as you probably know, is full of obstacles, uh, mountains everywhere you go. So getting to the trail is equally full of obstacles. If you remember the last video, I mentioned that I hiked the trail because I felt called uh, by God to go out there and to do it. And so for me, I had to resign my church. I am a, a Baptist pastor, and so I had to resign my church, which meant we had no more housing uh, to live in because we were in a parsonage. So we had to arrange housing for my wife, uh, Halo, and some children, or <laughs> not some children, but our kids, not random kids, but our kids, had to arrange housing for all of them. Uh, while I was then going, uh, we had to... to trust the Lord for some finances in the meantime. Uh, and you know what? It was absolutely amazing. Everything worked out. And the, the, what I heard on the trail was everyone has to quit jobs, arrange housing, babysitters for their houses and cars and whatever. Bottom line, as, as big of an obstacle as that seemed, it worked out for everybody. Like, it seems bigger than it is. So don't worry about these obstacles. Make it happen. Go out there, live life uh, to its fullest, and just enjoy it while you can. Hope that answers your question. Well, at first, I was planning on flying down and taking a shuttle over. But then I asked my fiancé if he would take me down, and he said yes to my surprise. He's a self-employed man, and he works 24-7, so I assumed he couldn't do it, especially since it was his busy season. Anyway, we drove down and stayed at the lodge, and I started my hike the next day. Okay, question number two. two. What, if any, obstacles did we have to overcome to make it on day one, start the trail? Well, because we're full-time RVers, we had to make a plan to store our RVs. And, um, you know, that whole organizational piece was a challenge, but we were able to do it. We had to store our trucks, so we had, and we went back to Colorado to train, stored our trucks, bought airplane tickets. I mean, we had yeah. some work to do. Yeah, organizing it, just organizing mm -hmm. the logistics of it all was a challenge. But then once we were there, once we got to Georgia, I mean, we just started. It was cold and rainy when we started, but mm -hmm. you're so excited, you just yeah. start then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it really flowed pretty well. Yeah. Once we got there, we took the Marta to, to up to our, I don't know, the end there, got a, got a ride. Oh, was it the Marta? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then we got a taxi. taxi to the, the mm -hmm. motel, and then the guy shuttle guy came and picked us up the next day, and we were at the trailhead. I mean, it was really smooth. Yeah. So. Yeah. Went anyway. pretty well. Yeah. All right. The two main obstacles I faced in reaching the start of the AT were distance and an infection. I'm from Nebraska. Yay! 
So my amazing dad drove with me for three days to reach Amicalola State Park in Georgia. It was a really cool road trip, but it had a couple of snags like construction and a few wrong turns. The other major one was an infection. Literally one mile into this hike, I got a UTI or urinary tract infection, and that hurt. So I had to get off trail before I reached even the official beginning of the Appalachian Trail. Good afternoon. My name is Jaws, and I'm going to talk to you today about some obstacles I had to overcome to get down to the trailhead in Georgia. Uh, the first thing I did, it was about 18 months away from my planned hiking start date. I went on a little tighter budget, saved up some extra money that would be able to cover expenses while I was gone because I would be leaving my job uh, voluntarily. The second thing I did was I put all my bills, utilities, things like that on auto pay and just made sure there was enough money in the account where the auto pays were being debited to take care of that while I was gone. The other thing I did is I had uh, opened up a new credit card. Uh, I was lucky enough to get 15 months of 0% interest for all purchases during that 15 months. I just set that up to do monthly minimum payments and then when I returned home I just went ahead and paid off that credit card with savings. Another thing I did was my car. I talked to my insurance agent, was able to uh, just park my car in my garage and drop my insurance bill for that six months about 80 to 90 percent. I mean, it was almost in cheap, uh, incredibly cheap. I think it was like 30 bucks just to have or keep my insurance so the state knew uh, I wasn't trying to cheat the system or anything. The other thing I did is I registered with the city police my house, letting them know that I would be gone for six months. They, I got on a special considerations list so they could, um, when they drove by, because it's a small town, they would know that I wasn't there. I gave them the names and details of all my relatives that would be stopping over to do yard work and things like that. And if they saw any cars that weren't on that list, uh, there could be something going on. The other thing I did was I had a family member take care of the yard work. Uh, he offered to do that for me. Uh, he was retired, so uh, he enjoys yard work. He did that for me. It was great. And the last obstacle I had was having a friend of mine uh, volunteered, a uh, lifelong friend of about 40 years, to drive me from Ohio down to Georgia. I just helped pay for gas, and um, he got me down there. And those were uh, the things I did to get to the trailhead and start off on my adventure. Hi, Try Try Radagast here. Um, question number two, obstacles I overcame to get to the AT. Well, besides the hundreds of steps coming up out of Amicola Falls and the Eight Mile Approach Trail, I would say leaving my comfort zone. Um, I had a little help with that. I was laid off from a job that I had worked at for 34 years. And um, so that kind of gave me a push, but the rest of it was by choice. I mean, all the little tasks that led up to me getting to the trailhead, each one of those tasks, you know, had a lot of excitement involved with them, but also some fear and anxiety. And um, there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of changes, you know, when you leave your comfort zone. So, you know what they say. Uh, one of the largest obstacles I had overcome uh, prior to starting uh, down at Mount Springer was just getting the money together. I was in college at the time and uh, I was working a few jobs, saving up. I ended up taking a year off school actually to um, help pay for this trip. I had to quit my job, um, which I was really comfortable and content at, um, and telling my friends and family you know, that I was going to off to do this. Um, was a little scary as well. Uh, we haven't had any major obstacle before going to the trailhead, but um, we had to, to plan a lot of stuff. Um, first, uh, we took off from our jobs for six months, so we had to plan everything uh, with coworkers and, and stuff to make sure all the work uh, that had to be done was done. Uh, also, we uh, we we have a house, so uh, we ask our parents to help us with um, house um, housekeeping and and to feed uh, our cats 
and you know um, all other stuff to you know uh, make our house uh, looks like somebody's living in there and uh, what else um, we had to plan you know everything you need to do before going to a trip so all the stuff like uh, booking uh, plane tickets and we need to to find uh, someone to give us a ride from the airport uh, to the Amicola La Falls State Park and we asked a guy named Ron Brown uh, that guy was really really kind and uh, we were really happy to meet him and what else um, I think everything went really fine for us uh, it's all about you know planning and but uh, you know hopefully we we didn't have many any major issues so it was for us uh, a good experience I think the biggest one would be financial we did change our lifestyle for a while mm. and saved every penny or at least tried um, Make sure our credit cards were at zero until yeah, my cat. All, we wiped out all of our debt. Um, until the cat had a UTI and ended up in the vet. For yeah. Oh, no, right before your hike? <laughs> yeah. Not right before. It was but, pretty close. I mean, but enough. <laughs> enough where it jacked up my credit card. But Oh. You know. Yeah. Is he okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yay. He's, he's somewhere around here lurking. But I yeah, have not seen a cat all night. <laughs> <laughs> Hiding. And um, so that else? was finances. Yeah, finances, okay. getting the house all in order. Yeah. Getting your, making sure your your house is closed down, your mail gets picked up, getting the the lawn cut, like all those little things you don't really think about on a yeah. day to day. I wouldn't really call them obstacles though. Yeah. Like, they're just yeah. logistical things that have to get taken care of. Like, I actually think the biggest obstacle was making sure that I had the time off because I there was this gap of time where he knew by February maybe of 2018 that he had the time and I did not know until the following September right. so that was February March April May I mean that that was over six months right. of me not we weren't really sure how that was all right. going to So just to recap, out. you're a teacher, so that played yes. into it. This yes. is a I'm specific a schedule. High school teacher. So it's a very specific starting point. Our big, biggest obstacle was the fact that we live in our camper. So we had to figure out what are we going to do with the camper for six months while we hike the Appalachian Trail. So what we decided was that we would park it north of Atlanta and we found a, a storage area to do that. And then we hiked all the way to Irwin, Tennessee rented a car and drove back to Georgia and drug it farther north. And we did that several times during our trip. Well, not many obstacles. I had a lot of support from family and friends. Um, my sister Rebecca and her husband Brett live in South Florida. And since I'm only three and a half hours from Springer Mountain, you know, I needed a ride there. So they had graciously offered to drive 17 hours up to pick me up just to drive me to Springer Mountain and send me off. We stayed at the lodge in Amicaloa, Um and they sent me off and it was really great because my brother uh, Michael flew in from Alaska to also see me off and they also picked up my daughter who was in central Florida somewhere. Um, so they all came, picked me up and drove me to Springer Mountain. I wouldn't quite say obstacles, it was more or less um, a blessing I think. So I had a really great send off and that's my answer to to question number two okay um well after spending a lot of time in college um i decided that i needed to take a break so that meant that i had to take a break from school and i had to leave school for a little bit and then i had to i had to work and i ended up working on an organic vegetable farm for a year so i was outside the whole time which was like it made me further appreciate the seasons and everything that I was about to get into on the AT. And, um, you know, during that year, I guess the only obstacle was, um, like getting all my gear dialed in because I had everything I needed, but I needed to lighten my load a lot. Um, so I think the biggest obstacle for me was saving the money to do it 
and being as frugal as I could within like the year that I worked on the farm and um, dialing in what gear I liked most and um, seeing what worked for me and what didn't work for me because there's a lot of trial and error involved in that that a lot of people don't think about that takes a lot of a lot of time and a lot of time out in the woods to get a feel for what actually works for you. Excellent. Well, luckily, not really obstacles. Uh, I guess the key thing was getting time off work. Um, I essentially just went to my boss and said, look, lots of the other people I work with have taken a long time off for mat leave. I'm not planning on having kids, so can I take time off on adventure leave? And they rolled their eyes as is their want, uh, but yeah, went okay with it, which was great. And then as far as getting to the trailhead, um, I spent a lot of time on the Appalachian Trail subreddit and someone one day was offering rides and I hooked up with them and yeah, it all worked out really nicely and that was my first indication of how really quite lovely and generous the trail community was. So for me there wasn't a lot of obstacles to get to Amicola Falls. I got lucky and I know someone that lives in Georgia and so I said, hey, I'm flying into the airport at this time on this day, can you pick me up? and we can run some errands and I can stay the night and then you can take me the next day to the trailhead. And they kindly agreed and that was it. So I didn't have to do all the shuttle and all that stuff that makes it a little more complicated. Um, had to sell some of my stuff, sold my house, sold my car, stuff like that, but it wasn't really too hard. Um, so there weren't a whole lot of obstacles to get to the trailhead. You know, I really didn't have any obstacles making it to the trailhead. Uh, the question is, uh, what obstacles, if any, did you have making it to the trailhead? I really didn't have any problems with it. Uh, I'm from the Midwest, from Kansas. So I jumped on the, the Greyhound. I kind of wanted an authentic experience, so jumped on the Dirty Dog and headed down to, uh, to Georgia. Wasn't too hard. Grabbed a shuttle from there to uh, Amicalola and uh, did the approach trail and off we went. So it's pretty easy for me to get started. Probably the biggest challenge really seriously getting to the AT is drowning out all the noise from all the naysayers and people that will uh, come your way and tell you, come up with reasons for you to not start a through hike or don't start it that day or that week or it wouldn't it be better if you did this or that. So. Get a, you gotta like tune out all that noise. And then once you start on the AT, you're gonna find out you need to do that from time to time uh, along the way. And just hike your own hike and, and get at it, so. Gas money. Uh, we both had to tell our employers that we were going to be taking uh, five to six months off to go hike the trail. So I guess that's an obstacle and we both did it and both of our bosses were um, understanding and cool with it. So we were able to take the time off and um, for that we're truly grateful. We came back to the same jobs so we couldn't have asked for a better situation. Yeah, I guess the obstacle was to first take the first step and ask for time off and then preparing for it as in saving the money figuring out what we're gonna do with insurance and the house and Bellicans and all the other stuff. Yeah. Those are the obstacles that we face and that I guess everybody else will face too. Right, figuring out how your life back <clears throat> home will go on. How to put things without you. on pause. Right. Stay tuned for the next question, number three, which is what obstacles my friends had to face while they were on the trail. So that will be interesting and probably much more varied from physical injuries to the mental game, um, to running out of money and all sorts of, of, of interesting things because I have very interesting friends. Take care you all and we'll see you next time.